I'm in an old boy. Hi, Jacob. Hello, love. How are you? Really nice. Finally, good to meet you. Yeah. I'm actually really happy you've done quite a few interviews so far. And mm -hmm. we talked about village and the meaning of village and yeah. what music means to you. So now we can get to the good stuff like cats and tattoos. Amen. Well, 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 well. How was that born? Um, it was a joke. I, I think I... I impersonate a lot when I'm singing or when I'm in a studio, I try different voices and, and be different people. And I think I was trying to be like an old blues person. So I sang well, 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 well. And it just kind of stuck. I think everyone in the studio kept doing it and it just kind of stuck. It wasn't, it wasn't intentional at all. I, don't know, I still do it every now and again, but um, I think it's become like a thing. Do you notice that people shout that louder than anything else on concerts? Yeah, when 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 I when I sing Mercy, everybody waits to sing Well 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 Well, but everyone always gets it wrong because it's on the second verse, not the yeah. first verse. But everyone just everyone, yeah, it's it's pretty funny. So the village comes from. It takes a village to raise a child, an African yeah. proverb. Who's your village? Who raised you both from African and Western side? Who were the people that made you? I think my grandma. My grandma was at the top of the village, just the head of the village. Then I, then I say my parents, and then after that, my friends. I think my friends really raised me. My friends pushed me to be better. And I think we, we help each other grow. And every friendship group I've been in, I think, really pushed me to see the world differently. I think even my online friends, I think, as well. I think in this day and age, I learned so much from being online, how to be conscious, how to be politically correct. And I think all these things raise me. Anything I allow myself to be open to has a chance to influence my decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're very close with your band, I see. How yeah. Um, we met on Tinder, all of us, yeah, it's just one bad date and here we are, you know. You're not joking? Deadly serious. Yeah. Can you find friends on Tinder? Oh, you actually believe me, that's incredible. No, no, that we can. Oh. <laughs> I, I was going to keep it going, but I thought, no. you know, like, this might not end well. My stepfather is English, I, I should know better not to believe any right, So we didn't meet on Tinder. We just, just to, yeah, just to bring it back. So no, it's all good. Right I met Daniel. Daniel is my guitarist yeah. and friend. Um, and Daniel introduced me to HB. HB is my drummer yeah. and friend. Um, Sean and Smooth, I'd known from back when I used to gig around London and they've always been good to me. And I've been working with Sean for about six years, probably the longest person I've worked with. And um, they're all just friends, man, just people that I really respect. And because I spend so much time on the road, it's so important to me to to be around kind people who we can, we can actually be a family. Because it's not it's not one show go home for two months. It's you know we, we spend we spend more time with each other than we do with our family. Mm -hmm. So it's, we have to become family and act like that. And we have a new member called Heather. She's from LA and she's such a sweetheart and she fits into the group really well. Mm -hmm. It was really it was really important for me to to hire a woman. I feel like, you know, when you're in a position to, to, you know, it's all good to scream about it, say, you know, you know, women, but, you know, I actually have a chance to add someone to my band. And I, I was very adamant and I had to be a woman or nothing at all. And um, found a perfect woman, Heather, and she's, she's been a wonderful addition to the family. Who made the initial drawing of the homesick tattoo? Homesick tattoo, I did. It was my idea, yeah. So we all have the homesick tattoo on us and um yeah i'm surprised they actually did it to be fair <laughs> every time we tour we get a tattoo so this is our so this is our third run so we're gonna and we always get it in the same tattoo shop in dallas so when we go to dallas again next year we'll have to get something going back to jokes it really seems like a big part of your life i'm still not over the batman joke what do you call it when batman skips church christian bale and I told everyone, no one seems to... Yeah, it's a really, it's an incredible joke, but I think you have to, you have to know. 
Because I've done that joke in places where, like, say, English wasn't the first language or pop culture and what popular culture isn't familiar and it's gone down hard. <laughs> like, it's, it's been painful. But the thing is, I know it's a funny joke, innit? So if you don't find it funny, it's because something's wrong with you. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah. What, what was the, uh, what's the funniest one you've heard so far? Lately, um, the funniest joke I've heard lately. Uh, it's an it's an airport joke. Okay. So when you're in the airport, and they say, "Do you have anything explosive on you?" You say, "No, nah, just this bum ass dick." It doesn't always work. <laughs> like the audience really. You the try dick, the yeah. audience. I try it all the time. And I try it when I'm on, when in the airport. I always tell that joke. Oh. It doesn't always work, but it's it's fun. You should stick to that man one. Yeah, think. I think so. It's a lot safer. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Um, so you just did soundtrack for Creed. Yeah. And it's actually in the movie. Yeah. It's I, I find one of the most powerful scenes. Mm. And did you know the scene prior to recording the song? Yeah, yeah, I got to see the, you know, when you're, when it's different from writing a soundtrack, like I've done, like I've written songs for films with an idea, just send you like a brief of the film and you, you give them a song that you think makes sense of the film. But when you're working, when you're scoring a movie, you have to see the film, you're, you're, you're doing a job, but you have to really separate Jacob Banks from it. It's like they're hiring Jacob to do a job. And I have to watch this scene and think, all right, well, I need to create something that best serves the scene, not, not about my artistic integrity. It's more about I'm doing a job that I'm getting paid for. So it's really interesting. I enjoy using that side of my brain. And um, yeah, so I got to see the, the, I got to see that the scenes I worked on beforehand. So one thing I find really different um, about you is that you seem very, very vulnerable in your perception of love. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to good, uh, good to me, yeah. I, was, I thought it was be good to me, I'll be good to you. And then I heard it, uh, yeah. it's be good to me, be good to me. And yeah. that's another yeah. example of you being just vulnerable. You never seem to bring violence to love, um, revenge to love, yeah. or um, you have to be this and I'll be this. Yeah. Uh, the same thing with Worthy and Grace. Uh, is it, uh, why is it important to you to be vulnerable in love? You said that you never got your heart broken. Yeah, so far so good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you ever break a heart? I would personally say no. Okay. But someone else might have a different opinion. Okay. I don't think I've ever broken a heart. Because I, I don't believe in, like, we had this conversation yesterday with a friend of mine. I just don't. I believe that things just are. I think two people come together, you've lived your life and your set of advice, I've lived mine and my set of advice, and somehow we find each other and we're supposed to find a middle ground. The odds are very slim. So if it doesn't work, I'm just like, you know what, this was good, it was so much fun. Thank you for the memories, thank you for helping me grow. I hope I, I did the same for you, and it was just part ways. I just think things just are. We're just two people that tried, it didn't work, it's okay. Okay. But I, I don't, and I give my all when I'm in a relationship. So by the time it finishes, I don't have any regrets. I don't, I'm not, I don't half step. So if it ends, I would have known in my heart that I've given all I had to give. And it just wasn't enough and it'll be fine. Someone uh, from your family taught you love. This it is a very special perception, as I said. It's Disney, Disney taught me love. I, everything I know about love is from films and cartoons. Honestly, okay. <laughs> I'm being yeah. That's not a joke. Yeah. No, no, I'm being. I don't trust you. No, no. Everything I know about love is gen genuinely from from happily ever afters. And to be fair, that the relationship between my mom and my dad, it's been a guideline without them teaching me anything. Just how I how they talk to each other, how they love on each other. I think it's been a benchmark for me. Mm. That's nice. Recently, I um, watched an interview with Will Smith and Jada Smith. Mm. They said that they never ever bring violence and profanity to relationship. Mm -hmm. Is that how what you saw? Yeah, same here. Like, 
in a relationship, like, if we're arguing, we're never allowed to swear at each other. It's very, like, you can never swear at me, I can never swear at you. Like, if, if you can't articulate yourself as an adult, go away, take some time, come back. Like, it's not, because for me, like, love and hate can't live in the same throat. So I can't tell you I love you, but simultaneously call you a bitch. Like, I don't think those two things are possible. Also, that being said, I believe Depending on how you grow up, that can be a reality for you. If you grow up in a household where people typically talk to each other like that, it becomes your norm. So the concept of right and wrong can really depend on how you were raised. For me, in my, in my family, my mum and dad has been married for 28 years and they have four kids and no one's ever seen my mum and dad argue, ever. In 28 years, they've never seen anything. They just talk, right? My mum wants this, my dad wants that. Either someone has to back down. And whoever it means the most, to wins. So if, if it means more to my dad, he gets his way. If it means more to my mum, she gets her way. Mm -hmm. 10 times out of 10, my mum gets her way. But um, it works, you know? We've been happy, able to keep a happy family. And I just don't, I just don't believe, I believe you can be aggressive because you were raised aggressive. I don't believe you have to stay aggressive. I think you can, you can learn and if someone loves you properly and, and understands you as a person, I think you can survive it. So going back to Village, what's your favorite word that you wrote? Mm, my favorite line is what I've learned from a soldier. Every man is a son to a daughter, but we only remember when we see the blood. What I've learned from a soldier I think either that one or the one before, or the moon line, which is what I've learned from the ocean. How to dance. How to dance and rejoice in emotion. Let the sun have its moment, the moon will come. I think between those two. Do you want people to know what you put in the song or in the line? Or I know it's open to interpretation. You know? Yeah, I, I used to think I wanted to, but after a while you realize people take what from, People take from a song what they need. Mm -hmm. So when you hear a song, whatever your heart needs is what you take from it. I could explain all I want. It's no longer my song. Once I put it out into the universe, it's for you now. You do what you want with it, feel what you need to feel. Like I geek out about my lyrics to the boys and, and, and Heather. Because like you know, what I've learned from the ocean, how to dance and rejoice in emotion. There's, there's a side to that. If you understand like gravity, for example, the moon governs the sea. So like I'm playing on a lot of like scientific cool shit that no one else will get unless you really care. Like so the moon gov governs the sea, governs the ocean. So the sea at night is a lot more. If you've ever seen a beach at night, like the waves are way more stronger because the moon's out. When when it's a full moon, the the ocean is a lot more has a lot more pull to it. So we're saying just you know let the sun enjoy the sun while it's here. And, you know, I imagine. The ocean misses the moon every time. I imagine that every time the moon goes away, the ocean's probably thinking, man, oh shit. But every time the moon shows up, you know, without fail, and I think that's what the line is saying, to, it's saying like, you know, you might be going through something right now, but the moon will come. At some point, it always shows up and you just have to be there when it comes. I just have one last thing for you. Cool. Um, just a quick um, so that's a Christmas little present. present. Yeah. Do I, do I open it now? Yeah. Okay. Well, you don't have to just please make I always think as it's many weird. emotions as you can. When, when, I know, but I'm, I'm gonna, yeah. When you Since have... you made such a mean joke on me, I'm gonna make you. Wait, is this a person. Batman mug? Oh, oh, this is heartbreaking. <laughs> this is. Okay, let me show you, let me show you what's happening. Oh, musician, meowzician. That's that's the incredible stuff. That's my best creation so far. Yeah. Do you want me to do you want me to tell you something really sad about this? This cat's dead. Juno's dead. Oh. She lived a great life though. Yeah. She was such a sweetheart. Yeah. And this is Zuko. That's my firstborn. This is him when I, this is the day I first got him, actually. Oh bless him. I make him wear these silly Christmas outfits every year. I've just got him one for this year. 
He's such a chill cat. Like, he, he lets me get away with everything. Like, that's him wearing a beanie. Well, hopefully you have that British side of you that likes tea, so. I love tea. Great. What's your favorite? Lemon and ginger, like every normal person. What's your favorite tea? Rose tea, just rose petals. Oh, lavish. Thank you so much for Thank having you. me. It's a privilege. Thank Hope you enjoy you. the show. Thank you. Please come to Russia. I have to say that. Are you all right? I've been getting a lot of messages about Russia. I'm just like, are you sure? I'm like, in the sense of like, I didn't know. Like, I don't know how, and I, I know a lot of it has to do with you. To be fair, I give you your credit. You put me on out there, I see you. But it's just random. I'm just like, really? Like, like Russia fuck with me? I didn't know. Okay. Trust me, we're waiting for you. Yeah, cool. We'll no, pull up. Sure. We'll pull up. You can listen, get Village everywhere. Music is sold. And um, when's your tour end? Um, we're touring till March. The March 9th okay. this year. We'll probably keep going, but this village tour ends in March 9th. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, have a great show. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.